On today's video blog, I'm gonna go for a little wind walk. I'm gonna start up on top of the ridge here and then uh, work my way into the wind, down off the ridge, into the trees and down into the valley. And I've got these little wind checkers. Uh, basically all this stuff is, is just uh, the stuffing that goes into a pillow, the little polyester stuffing. And uh, I'm just gonna drop little bits of it. And you can see as we go how the terrain and the cover and even the gustiness of the wind affects what direction these things go. And, and I think it'll be, uh, I'm gonna be curious myself to see how it all you know, plays itself out as we continue to drop off this hill. What I expect is up on top, it's gonna be more or less consistent because you've got open field and you've got uh, basically a wind that's not affected by the terrain. But as we go further down in, it's gonna be more and more affected by the terrain and the trees. And you're gonna see a lot of weird stuff uh, that, this, that the wind is doing with our scent. And when we get to the very bottom and start getting to the other side, which would be the windward side, I think you'll see some, some serious reversal of the wind direction because it comes over the top and then gets into that dead air space and then whips back in the direction that it came from as it comes down underneath. So let's go for a little walk. Uh, first off, pretty gusty so these conditions can be really hard to hunt in because even on places where the wind should be consistent like up on this ridge every time you get a gust it blows hard in one direction but then you get that little bit of a calm between the gusts a lot of times that the pressure that built or, or unloaded behind the gust sucks the, the breeze back again in the other direction so even on gusty conditions up on a ridge you can still run into trouble but let's try this okay I've got okay it's going straight to the west, east, west. So we're just gonna walk right into the wind and see what happens here. Uh, just a, every 10 yards or so, I'm gonna drop some more of these. <clears throat> Out in the wide open like this, you're always gonna expect it to be most consistent, still blowing straight across. If I got in behind that tree, I'm pretty sure it'd be different right next to the tree. You know, if I was up in the top of the tree, I think you'd still have that consistency. But anything, you, anytime you've got something that blocks the flow of the wind, you're going to get swirling in behind that. Okay, I'm going to try another one here. I don't expect much change yet. We come about 75 yards or so. Now it's kind of going that way. Yeah, now it's blowing like this. So it's almost blowing straight to the north. And there's probably some effect from these trees because the wind isn't switching like that. The wind is steady. I looked at the forecast. It's going to be steady out of the east pretty much for the next day and a half. So what we're seeing is the effect of the wind coming off over the top of these trees. And as it does, it's being pulled uh, in this direction. So if you're up higher, I think it would be different. You know, I think if you're in the tops of these trees, I think your scent would still blow straight out. But once you get down, now I can feel it really swirling in here. <laughs> I'm gonna try another one. This is gonna be an eye opener. Okay, now that one went straight to the west again, like the other ones had been doing. So we have 90 degrees of variation over the course of about you know, that one went to the south, almost to the south, kind of the southwest. So now we've got 140 degrees of variation in where these uh, little floaters have gone in maybe just a couple of minutes, not even that, just less than a minute's time. It's kind of real still right now. Let's see what, what happens. Okay, that one went back. Well, that one's really taken off. That one went back to the, to the north again. So now we're... If you're sitting up, or you got, a, let's say you got a ground blind here or whatever, uh, you can't count on anything on your downwind side because the wind, the way it swirls coming off these trees and in this little dead airspace behind this pocket of trees, it's just going every different direction. And the harder the wind blows, the more it swirls, the more unpredictable it is. If it was a real light wind today, my guess is that it would come through these trees pretty easy. You wouldn't have that same effect of, you know, where it goes rushing into the trees and then you know, the pressure drops off behind it a lot more drastically because the wind is blowing so hard. I don't think you'd have as much swirling if the wind wasn't blowing as hard. Let's keep going. 
Okay, came another 40 yards or so. Now we're starting to get even more into the protected space behind these trees. All right, that one went straight west like it's supposed to. My guess is the next gust, we're gonna see something crazy. Uh, that one went angling off to the south. Try another one here. That one headed back to the south as well. So now we've got 75 degrees of variation and the wind hasn't even really gusted and we haven't moved at all in, over the course of 30 seconds. All right, another quick check. All right, that one went straight west like it's supposed to. So did that one. I feel a little bit of gust. Let's see what that does. Nope, still going straight west. So we're maybe getting into the trees a little bit. The wind is starting to stabilize. Maybe it's just that pocket of dead air on the downwind side of the trees where it's swirling around. For sure, if we were up in the top of that oak tree right there, we'd have a lot more stable conditions for the wind flow than we will down here on the ground. You have more vegetation here, which slows the wind down and creates more of a swirling. Uh, think about it that way. Think about it like water flowing through a trout stream. Anything that slows that water down creates an eddy on the downwind side. And the more violent the water is moving, the more aggressively uh, the water eddies in behind that rock or behind that wing dam or whatever it is. Uh, so think, think in terms of anything that stops the wind or slows the wind is going to create an eddy, which is basically swirling. All right, I'm still heading straight west. And the reason it's significant on that uh, field edge, a lot of people will set up where they think the wind is perfect when they've got uh, deer coming out into a field. They think their scent is blowing a certain way, but as it's coming either from the field and hitting the trees and pushing along the trees, or coming from the trees and swirling into that dead pocket of air, which basically is the field, you get a lot of variation in the direction that the wind is actually taking your scent. So, so far that's the one thing that, I, that I've been able to show um, with this little walk so far, is that you gotta be careful when you set up on the edge of a field. You can't just assume that the conditions that are prevailing up high in the air are gonna be the same you know, as you're down lower because you're gonna get that swirling effect from the dead air on the back side of the, the trees you know, that are protecting it. All right, I'm a little bit further down the hill. Let's try another one. Remember, the wind is coming from that direction. Not a whole lot has changed since the last spot. All right, that one went quite a bit to the north. I'd say that was 45 degrees off from the ones I dropped just a little bit ago. And that one headed off in that direction too. So we're getting a little bit of localized, eh, that one went straight west. So we're in about a 45 degree variation on these last ones that I've dropped. That one went back to the north too. So something either with the way this ridge lays, the wind is humping up over that, or it's the way that the cover lays in here, we're getting a little bit of a swirl that takes the scent you know, over a 45 degree angle. Let's try one more just for fun. Yeah, see that one went almost straight north. Oof. Now we're at about a 90 degree variation from straight west to straight north and the wind direction hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is how it gusts and how it swirls through these trees. Okay, now I'm on the downwind side of some pretty thick cover here. Let's see what that does. It's just a little alleyway that I've cut down through there that leads into the valley. So there's a lot of brush blocking the wind here. See, that one almost dropped straight down, angled back to the south, it's still going to the south. That one went straight west. Straight west. And that one went still kind of floating around. It's heading back to the south. So they're there went a leaf across the trail, if you notice that. I mean, they're blowing almost straight to the south across there. 
Yeah, that one went dead south. Now it turned and <laughs> headed back west. So it's a lot of that has to do with just this ground cover. So if, if you kind of take that one step further and you say early in the season when the trees have got leaves on, the dead air on the back, uh, on the downwind side of a tree line is going to have a lot more effect on the wind swirling right there than it will at this time of the year. Because right now we've got no leaves in the trees, so the wind has a little bit more of a clean shot going through. But if there was leaves in all these trees and you had the same wind, you'd have a lot more swirling, I think, uh, on that open field on the back side of, of where the wind is coming out over the top. This kind of shows us that anything that more or less stops the wind, like I said, is going to have a lot of swirling on the back side of it. So taking that one step further, you know, if you're thinking about field edges, in the early season you don't want to set up where the wind is coming over the tops of the trees into dead air. You'd be better off setting up on the other side of the field if possible where the wind is coming across the field so it's got a straight shot and then it's going to hit the trees and it's going to probably push one way or the other along the tree line. Possibly it would push in and go over but more, more than likely it's going to hit you know, where, where you're at in the tree and it's going to push you know, one side or the other depending on the angle of the wind you know, as it's hitting the trees. But no matter what, um, the wind is going to play havoc with you when you've got a lot of wind and there's a lot of leaves in the trees if you're on those field edges. Okay, now I'm getting into the very bottom. Let's see what happens here. I can already feel it coming at my back. That went straight south. Actually, it's still going. So that's a 90 degree angle. Wind is coming from that direction. It just went straight to the south. Now I can feel it if I get one up quick enough. I didn't see where that one went. But it's going a different direction, I'm sure of that. <laughs> Still not seeing them. <laughs> there it goes. So they're going straight north. <laughs> so the wind is coming over the top of the hill, across this little open field. The first drop went straight south, the second drop went straight north. And granted, it's only going to go a little ways before it gets pushed again. It's not like it's going to go straight north for a quarter of a mile, or straight south for a quarter of a mile. It's going to be a local swirl, and then it's going to get caught up in something else. Um, but the point being, you don't have very much control over where it goes down in here when the, when the wind is coming across the top of the valley like that, and we're down in the dead air. All right, let's try one right out in the very bottom of this little field. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that one went east. Nope, here it comes back again. Nope, it's going back east. So here we are in the very bottom with an east wind, and that floater went east. So it's finally turning back on itself. See what this one does. All right, that one went straight west. So you get that gust of wind, it hits, you get the swirling, something, some of it goes that way, some of it goes this way. This is the main reason right now what you're seeing at this, at this time is why I don't like to hunt valleys. It's kind of still right now. Let's see what this one does. I don't know where it went, straight down. The next time it gusts, you'll see there goes one straight to the south. Now it's turning, kind of following the wind a little bit now. So I always preach about not hunting in these valleys unless you're in a blind. I've got a redneck blind just a little bit behind Zach there that, that uh, we hunt out of when we do hunt down in here. I mean, it's so tempting because there are some spots down here that are killer spots where you've got trails going through ditches or whatever the case may be, where you just feel like if I could just sit there, I'd kill a big buck every single season. And you probably would. The only problem is they're going to smell you. So let's try another one. All right, that one went, started out east and then swung back around to the north. I'll just keep dropping them. That one went straight west like it's supposed to. So did that one. I bet you as soon as this gust dies down, I bet you we're going to see some that go back east. Another one went west. Where's this one gonna go? Eh, uh, straight down. Come off there. That one went straight to the north. Back west. Nope, now it curled and went north. So we've been down here for, I don't know, a couple minutes just dropping floaters. And we've seen some that went east We've seen some that went north or 
west, some went south, some went north. Uh, just going everywhere. And if I had to guess, we're not going to do it. We'll go up to the tree line, but we're not going to go across and get to the very, uh, on the upslope of the windward side. I think it'd be even more of a swirling on that side because that's right up against the dead air where you've got the wind swirl coming over the top. Here we get the little bit of benefit of the wind starting to straighten out and, and push back up this hill. Right over in that little pocket right there, I think is gonna be the absolute worst swirling. <clears throat> All right, try a couple more here. Oops, there he goes. So that one went southeast with a east wind. That one went, there he goes, straight south. Like I said, I believe if the further into that valley we go and the closer we get to that upslope, the even more swirling or, or the more the wind is going to reverse and go the opposite direction of what it's blowing up on top of the ridge. So I think I've made my point. I mean, I could drop these things until there aren't any left in this little thing, but uh, the, the, the goal of this video blog was to show you some of the challenges that we face when we're trying to figure out exactly how to hunt the wind. When the wind is fairly steady and light, it's more predictable than when it's blowing hard and gusting, for sure. We're seeing the harder gusting conditions today. Uh, but no matter what you do, you're always gonna have some kind of stuff that surprises you, especially on the downwind side. You know, we've, we've shown a variation of almost 180 degrees, even on the, the slope that the wind was hitting into of, of what direction the floaters went. So you don't want to try to get too cute with threading the needle on the downwind side. You always want to set up where you've got a lot of leeway, a lot of margin for error with that wind swirling on the downwind side of you if you're in, in a good setup. I mean, I wouldn't even begin to hunt down in this little valley here because it's just going to swirl everywhere. I mean, you, you won't have a safe side. At least if you go up on the hill a little ways, the stuff on the windward side, this, in this case, it's the east wind, so it's on the east side, that should be you know should be good any deer on that side of you you should be able to get away with it any deer on the other side of you um, you're going to get into trouble because at some point or another that wind seems like it's going to kick you know it's going to take your scent uh, over a wide wide range of, of uh, directions well that's it for my video blog today i was hoping we'd find an antler uh, maybe we'll wander around here a little bit and uh, see if we can find one down in this little valley and if we do we'll show it to you otherwise keep checking back and i'll keep producing these things and you know, now that we're into the off season, we're going to start putting the content on the site a lot more consistently. So uh, at least every couple of days, check back and you should have some fresh stuff to watch.